This month, we introduce SciCheck, a new feature on factcheck.org. SciCheck will focus exclusively on false and misleading scientific claims that are made by partisans to influence public policy. So let's take a look at some of those problematic claims, beginning with vaccines. I've heard of many tragic cases of walking, talking, normal children who wound up with profound mental disorders after vaccine. There is no evidence that any currently recommended vaccine causes brain damage or other mental disorders in otherwise healthy children. Now let's turn to climate change. Representative Gary Palmer recently tried to resurrect a false claim in an interview on radio host Matt Murphy's show. I, I think it might be a matter of the report that came out last week about uh, the government manipulating data and misleading people a little bit, but uh, two feet of snow ought to Are you, uh... attention. Yeah, well, and it's not the first time. I mean, I wrote about this a couple of years ago when it came out that the, the scientist at East Anglia uh, East Anglia University in, in England had done this, and that was the data that the United Nations report was based on. And it was a huge scandal. There were emails going around uh, where they were, the scientists were literally talking about how they were going to uh, change the data. So we, we're building an entire agenda on falsified data that will have an enormous impact on the economy. And the report to which Palmer referred was actually a series of blog posts written by climate change denier Paul Homewood, which were then highly publicized in two stories by Christopher Booker in the Daily Telegraph in London. Both writers focused on the adjustments made to temperature readings at certain monitoring stations around the world, and claimed that those adjustments throw the entire science of global warming into question. This is not at all the case, and those adjustments are a normal and important part of climate science. As for the so-called ClimateGate episode Palmer references from five years ago, the ClimateGate scandal has been subject to several separate investigations, all of which exonerated all scientists involved from any wrongdoing. Finally, let's take a look at what President Obama had to say about the Human Genome Project. And one study found that every dollar we spend to map the human genome has already returned $140 to our economy. That's not the whole story. There was, in fact, such a study, released in 2011, but it was updated in 2013 to say that the return on investment is $66 for every dollar spent. Obama's repetition of the original number overstates just how impressive the Human Genome Project's economic effects have been. The year Dr. Collins helped sequence the first human genome, it cost about $100 million, and today it costs less than $2,000. Not exactly. Actually, by the government's own accounting, the average cost is $4,905. To see more, take a look at SciCheck on factcheck.org. SciCheck is made possible by a grant from the Stanton Foundation.